Hey, what's up everybody? This is Always back with another video of Java Essential Training Series. So today's topic is threads in Java. Java is a multi-threaded programming language, which means we can develop multi-threaded programs using Java. A multi-threaded program contains two or more parts that can run simultaneously and each part can handle a different task at the same time, making optimal use of available resources, especially when your computer has multiple CPUs. Now let's look at the multitasking by definition. So multitasking is when multiple processes share common processing resources such as CPU. Multi-threaded extend the idea of multitasking into applications where you can subdivide a specific operation within a single application individual threads. Each of threads can run in parallel. The OS divide processing time not only among different applications but also among each thread within an application. Now, what are the advantages of threads in Java? It doesn't block the user thread because Threads are independent and you can perform multiple operations at the same time. You can perform many operations together so it saves time. Threads are independent so it doesn't affect other thread if exception occurs in a single thread. Now let's look at the multitasking again. We have two types of multitasking here, processed based multitasking and thread based multitasking. Now what is a process based multitasking? Each process have its own memory address and each process allocates separate memory area. Process is very heavyweight and cost of communication between the process is very high. Now, thread based multitasking. Threads share the same address space. Thread is lightweight and cost of communication between the threads is low. Now, there's a life cycle of a thread. So I've got this diagram here. Now let me explain to you that trigram. We have the new thread which has a keyword new. So a new thread begins its life cycle in the new state. It remains in this state until the program start thread. It also referred to as a born thread. Then we have runnable. After a new born thread is started, the thread becomes a runnable. A thread in this state is considered to be executing its task. Then we have waiting. Sometimes a thread transition to the waiting state while the thread waits for another thread to perform a task. A thread transition back to the runnable state only when another thread signals the waiting thread to continue executing. And then we have a timed waiting. A runnable thread can enter the timed waiting state for a specific interval of time. A thread in this state transition back to the runnable state when that time interval expires, then we have terminated. A runnable thread enters the terminated state when it completes its task or otherwise terminates. Next. So how to create threads. You can create thread by extending thread class and you can create threads by implementing a runnable interface. So let's look at the thread classes first. Thread class provide constructors and methods to create and perform operation on a thread. I will give you an example. First, let me give you an explanation of a runnable interface. So the runnable interface should be implemented by any class whose instance are intended to be executed by a thread. So runnable interface have only one method named run. Now let's look at the example. Example by extending thread class, okay? So we have a class called a multi which extend the thread class and then we use a run method and then we print out thread is running and every program needs a main method as well. So we have a main method here and then we have multi and then ti is the object name. So I'm creating an object from multi class which extend thread then use that method to start the process. So this is a simple example of extending thread class. All right, now let's look at an example by runnable interface. Now here we have multi three class which implements runnable class. And then we have a run method, the same as out for printing out thread is running. Public state void main, that's a main method. 
and then we're using a multi tree class and creating a new object m1 is equal to new multi tree object all right so then we creating another object t1 is equal to thread and then we're using that method so this is an example of a runnable interface so this is it for this video guys and next video i'll give you some more examples how to create threads and where to use threads so thanks for watching this video and if you have any question let me know in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and always you can follow me on twitter at oasmus01 thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next video cheers